Hi everyone, thank you so much for having me at the Early Childhood Voices Conference 2022. I am Roxanne Milan and today I'm going to be presenting on the evolution of swallowing and feeding abilities of neonates with hypoxic ischemic encephalopathy during hospitalization. And I would just like to acknowledge my co-authors whose names are listed below. I am from the Department of Speech, Language, Pathology and Audiology at the University of Pretoria in South Africa. The research that I am about to present was conducted at a tertiary academic hospital in South Africa and forms part of my PhD in Speech, Language, Pathology. So as an introduction, so despite medical advances, rates of neurological compromise among neonates actually remain quite high today. And one of the big causes of this neurological compromise includes hypoxic ischemic encephalopathy. Neonatal HIE occurs in about 1 to 20 out of 1,000 live births. The figure 1 out of 1,000 comes from higher income countries, and in lower and middle income countries such as South Africa, the rates can be about 20 times higher. HIE can be graded as mild, moderate, or severe, and the condition has a profound burden of disease due to high rates of mortality and neurodevelopmental disability. HIE commonly also results in oropharyngeal dysphagia, or OPD, which refers to a swallowing difficulty in the oral or pharyngeal phases, pharyngeal referring to the throat. So, Consequences of OPD can be quite dire. They can include malnutrition, dehydration, aspiration, reduce, reduced health status, increased length of hospital stay, increased medical costs, and these really place strain on healthcare resources. So evidence-based early intervention might actually help mitigate some of these negative consequences. Despite this though, Research on OPD among infants in general is quite limited, and specifically among neonates with HIE, there is a lack of validated and standardized assessment tools which have been used in the research to investigate OPD, and gold standard instrumental evaluations of this population are also needed. So these instrumental evaluations include videofluoroscopic swallow studies, which provide a more objective assessment of swallowing. Serial assessment of OPD is also really found in the relevant research and this is problematic because neonates are not static ent entities. They present with rapidly evolving anatomical and physiological subsystems and they present with evolving and changing needs during hospitalization. So the study aim was to describe the evolution of swallowing and feeding among neonates with HIE during their hospital stay. And to achieve this, the following sub-aims were developed. Firstly, to describe and compare the swallowing and feeding abilities of neonates at introduction of oral feeds and at discharge from hospital. To describe the swallowing and feeding abilities of affected neonates according to HIE severity. So how do neonates with mild, moderate, and severe HIE differ from each other? and then to explore the relationship between OPD severity and length of hospitalization. Now we get to the method. We used a longitudinal cohort study and recruited 29 participants. Seven of them had mild HIE, 19 had moderate, and three had severe HIE. If you look at the consort flow diagram to the right of the slide, you can get an idea of the inclusion and exclusion criteria. Once participants were deemed medically ready for the introduction of oral feeds by the treating pediatrician, they were assessed using the Neonatal Feeding Assessment Scale, or the NFAS, on the same day. The NFAS is a valid and reliable assessment tool which was developed in South Africa, and the NFAS was also re-administered on the day each participant was discharged from hospital. Video fluoroscopic swallow studies were also conducted prior to discharge. The IBM SPSS was used for all statistical analyses and descriptive statistics were obtained. 
specifically McNema's test for paired nominal binary data compared participants' performance on the NFAS initially versus discharge, and Bonferroni adjustments were applied where variables were tightly related. Non-parametric Spearman's rank order correlations investigated correlations between the number of combined OPD symptoms as a reflection of OPD severity and the length of hospital stay. Now we get two results. So as an overview, we got our results then from the initial NFAS, the discharge NFAS, and the video fluoroscopic swallow study. If we're looking at the OPD in the beginning of hospitalization, we are looking at the initial NFAS and the video fluoroscopic swallow study. And using this, we could see that two thirds of participants actually displayed swallowing and feeding difficulties. And this reinforces OPD as a concern among neonates with HIE. Fortunately, by discharge, participants displayed significantly fewer signs and symptoms of OPD. Their non-nutritive sucking and nutritive sucking endurance significantly improved. All participants went home on full oral feeds, with most receiving either exclusive breastfeeding or express breast milk feeds. This is also beneficial since past research has shown that breastfeeding and express breast milk have distinct benefits for neonates. Despite this, five participants still presented with OPD in at least one area at discharge. Most difficulties included short sucking bursts. With the video fluoroscopic swallow study, we identified considerably more delayed swallows than the NFAS. We also found that nine participants demonstrated penetration or aspiration, and most aspiration events were actually silent. So the majority of participants, when the liquid entered the airway, they didn't actually respond with coughing. This is an important finding because it means that this could be missed at bedside. Causes of penetration and aspiration included disorganization of the neonate at the beginning of the video swallow, as well as excessive drowsy and crying states, Additionally, four participants demonstrated aspiration due to reduced endurance, which we picked up during fatigue testing. How do the results differ between the HIE severity grades? Well, firstly, in the mild group, OPD symptoms actually did occur in the initial NFAS assessment, but no OPD signs occurred by discharge. This is really an important finding because a lot of people seem to think that neonates with mild HIE might have outcomes which are quite typical, but it just shows that neon these neonates do remain at risk for adverse outcomes, especially in the short term. Then in terms of the moderate group, OPD symptoms occurred across the greatest variety of areas for this group. They actually surprisingly showed the fewest OPD symptoms during video swallow, but formed the bulk of participants displaying penetration or aspiration and they also demonstrated persistent difficulties at discharge. So this just again shows that the outcomes of neonates with moderate HIE are variable and difficult to predict. For the severe group, unsurprisingly, they showed the most frequent OPD symptoms initially and also showed the greatest OPD severity during video swallow. But Surprisingly, by discharge, they only showed one persistent difficulty, and this occurred in the motor performance area. So this just shows that this group might have the potential to recover neurologically and actually respond to early intervention, although it must be noted that only participants who, or only neonates who survived HIE during hospitalization participated in the study. Speaking of HIE severity grades, it's also important to note that the way in which different grades of HIE are managed might also independently impact swallowing and feeding. For example, the more severe forms of HIE might require that the neonates are intubated and ventilated, which can also have a risk for OPD. Additionally, the main neuroprotective strategy that we use to treat therapeutic to treat neonates with HIE is therapeutic hypothermia. 
And this is usually given or offered to moderate and severe groups, not the mild group. And because there are so often oral feeding restrictions during therapeutic hypothermia, the mild and moderate neonates might receive oral feeds later than their mild counterparts. And this might also affect their swallowing and feeding abilities when comparing the different groups. The current study appeared to be the first to investigate the correlation between OPD severity and length of hospitalization among neonates with HIE, but a significant correlation was not found. It is possible that the early identification and management of OPD may have decreased the length of hospitalization among the participants because all participants received daily oral sensory motor intervention by the same SLP. But it must also be noted that a small sample size could have affected this. And also the fact that the hospital has systems in place to monitor and follow up neonates who are discharged with some symptoms of OPD. Other hospitals might not have these systems in place, so neonates might stay longer until their OPD is completely resolved. Clinical implications. So, the role of early speech-language pathology intervention in mitigating the effect of OPD severity on length of hospitalization remains important, and SLPs are actually uniquely equipped to manage swallow and feeding difficulties in these neonates. Neonates with all grades of HIE should be considered for early intervention, and SLPs should ideally use opportunities during hospitalization for early intervention and parent coaching before families are discharged and dispersed to a wide variety of areas where early intervention services might be scarce. And then the last clinical implication could be that the value of instrumental dysphagia evaluation is highlighted because the video swallows actually identified more symptoms of pharyngeal face dysphagia than the bedside evaluation. And then I just want to mention implications for families and parents as well. Because OPD is such a risk factor, if your neonate is affected by HIE, it would be important to consult with an SLP for early intervention to see if this is needed for favorable outcomes later on. Limitations and future perspectives. So common resource limitations in lower middle income countries were highlighted in the study. So this includes things like the timing of the video swallows because they could unfortunately not be conducted on the same day as the initial infest due to resource constraints. Additional study limitations include a small sample size and unequal distribution of participants with mild, moderate and severe HIE. These aspects could need to be addressed maybe for future re uh, research so that more effective comparisons can be made. Further well-designed experimental studies on neurological recovery, early establishment of oral feeds and length of hospitalization are also warranted, and intervention for OPD among neonates with HIE should further be investigated because this was not included in the current study. As a conclusion, the study provided a comprehensive description of the evolution of swallowing and feeding among neonates with HIE during hospitalization using a validated and standardized assessment tool and instrumental evaluation. So findings might be beneficial to neonatal feeding teams, and this doesn't just include professionals, but also family members. Here are my references. Thank you so much for listening.